Hello everybody. Today I'd like to demonstrate what I think is one of the best value, most distinctive and most worthwhile sample library collections on the planet. And that is Spitfire Labs from Spitfire Audio. Each sound in this library costs a mere $3 or £3 and every single pence and cent of that goes to charity. It's a wonderful initiative by Christian Henson and Paul Thompson from um, um, Spitfire Audio, and I think it's a really brilliant thing which uh, lots of people should be um, taking advantage of, not least because the sounds themselves are absolutely amazingly inspiring. And let me show you what I mean. So here we have um, uh, my uh, Cubase, which is open. All I've got is one. Uh, you need the full version of Contact, and this here, uh, over on the left-hand side, uh, is the list of um, sounds which are available. Everything from Alien Bell, Bedlam Piano, right the way through to these which sort of give it away a bit, like Kitchen Sink and Metal Fan. Um, hamster Cage. I thought I was the only person who had a hamster in his office. Um, obviously not. Obviously Christian has one. What a lot of these um, sounds quite clearly are, are um, sounds which uh, Christian and Paul have developed for specific projects. For example, if you uh, load up a sequoia, uh, um, that sound there, which is a really, really nice sound. Does that not remind you of the uh, opening titles to uh, Top Gear? Those of you who know that, um, which Christian did. So I'm pretty sure that that's what he used in there. And rather than just kind of leave it lying around on a hard drive, he's put it out there, put it in Spitfire Labs, and it's now made over $200,000 not that one sound, but the collection in whole, for charity, which is just amazing. Really, really amazing. OK, look, let's have a little look. Let's find a basic... Amongst all the weird and wacky sounds like um, hamster cage and sequa, there are lots of really useful normal... I mean, I say normal in inverted commas, normal sounds in there. Uh, Wurlitzers and guitars and things like that. So let us start with, actually, what about kalimba? Kalimba's always an interesting one. Let's see what that's like. Oh, cool. Okay. Shall we add a bit of reverb to that? Okay, I'll tell you what. I'm going to start. I'm going to start a little piece, and then we're just going to add bits to it as we go. And we're not writing anything very serious. We're just going to see how this little collection, you know, how we might find some ideas. I think a little sort of... Okay, so that was a complete, completely random, slightly minimalistic um, little passage, um, which we will quantize and loop um, so that we can keep this whole little enterprise going. Uh, there's going to be a little break at the end, and then it'll go on. Okay, right. That'll loop. Don't really need the click with something. As okay, mini harp. What do you think mini harp's going to sound like? Find out in a second. See. quite like that. Um, it's, um, it's sort of vaguely, vaguely kind of minimalistic and everything. But I mean, it's kind of, is it a bit dense? Is there too much going on? A bit more reverb. What happens if I put some delay on this as well, do you think?
okay, I quite like that. <laughs> I, I never plan any of these things, and sometimes it comes out sounding like the worst idea anybody's ever had. And, and I sometimes wonder people sitting at home thinking, what is this bloke on? Okay, Frozen Street, there are quite a lot of sounds in this uh, amazing collection which sound like prototypes for things which turned into libraries. Um, and if those of you for not, uh, who are familiar with uh, Tundra, uh, which is this kind of Nordic noir type sounds, which, um, Albion Tundra, if you look at uh, the Frozen Strings, hence and Frozen Strings, it's got things like Super Sultasto and things which have started to crop up in other libraries they do. So let's have a listen to what that sounds like. Very, very quiet. It's very quiet. Okay, I mean, I could work with that. I think I'm going to try that one, the frozen string. See what that sounds like. Oh, it's got a sort of, it's got a nice, it's really nice. Let's try this, see how this goes. Let's let this piece start a bit. For not going to get it's a lovely sound but it's not right for this particular little work do you think so um, frozen strings I'll say for another time um, I don't want just percussive things uh, claps and claps and snaps would that possibly work I don't know find out in a moment won't we okay what uh, channel has that gone on do where are you channel three Oh, down here. Oh. Ah, snaps is going to work better. <laughs> I've only just noticed this. Solo female snaps. How, how how far in life have you got to go? Can you really hear the difference between a... Okay, well, let's find out. Okay, this is a solo female snap. Or clap, as that was. There. Where is it? Oh, there's only a duo. Oh, no, there's a solo male. There's a solo male. Can we hear that difference between that and the solo male? Wow! Obviously, that's a clap. <sighs> that's definitely got more masculinity about it as the snap goes. I'm not, I'm not loving that right now either. I mean, I, nice sound, nice sound, but not for this particular piece, which uh, is uh, taking shape. Um, hamster finger dulcimer. Am I going with the plucky sounds all the way? Maybe I am. that oh, look so they've got multiple artic you know they don't come with huge oh that's it is nice sound I'm gonna add it anyway because I like it Ooh. oh okay it's the, I've just changed it's the mini harp I've changed Do I like that? I'm not sure. It's too similar to the harp. Okay. Okay, so it's got a sort of bispigliato thing going on here with the harp. Look. Ho oh, ho, that's lovely. Not this, not not there, but it's um, very nice. Okay, harmonic piano. 
I can imagine what this might be like. And that one like that. Here we go. Let's try this. Okay, I'm going to play it quietly, so turn the volume up. This might work. By itself is a nice sound. I know what I want to do. Right, what I'm going to do is that sound there. Yeah, I'm just going to play one note. And then I'm going to bounce that out and I'm going to reverse it and do stuff like that. So here we go. Hello, little note. Bounce you out. Render you to audio. Shtung! There you go. Right. Now, let's hide that for a moment. Go away over there. There it is. Copy that. Uh, delete the rest. Don't need the rest. Now stick down here somewhere a little audio track, uh, which we'll call harm p and then we'll paste the audio in and command r will reverse it and there we are now what happens with quite a lot of reversing stuff is actually if you take the um very very end of it you don't get that which actually is more effective sometimes so and again i think given everything else is quite ambient in here i think we're going to have to um, add some reverb and things to that. Um, where's my reverse -y thing gone? Okay, here's the here's my mixer, which I've been faffing with on another monitor. Uh, Harm P, here we go. Right, let's add some uh, oh, lexicon reverb. I like this lexicon native reverb. Uh, do we want some... Re um, well, we'll add the... What's called Lex2 here is actually the delay, which is H-Delay, the um, a Waves plugin, which is really, really nice. I don't need as much of it as that. Just run it again, and I don't need it there either. I need it further down. Right, let's see how that sounds. Fade in. That's quite nice. Okay, so what, therefore, bar four, where that comes in, we want to bring something else in. This is starting to take shape, isn't it? Okay, Spitfire Labs, let's try the nylon guitar. See how that goes. And uh, it's on channel four. Mm, nice. Difficult one to sample nylon guitar well. There's something there. I just have to sort my musical, get my musical act together because it sounds fine, uh, the, but the music isn't. Um, so let's start up there and. No slow. 
slow, slow, slow going, slow. Can't help playing fast, that's my trouble. Okay, we're not going to mess with this for much longer. Ah! Where have I put my, where have I put my thing? Where's it gone? Come out, come back. It's hiding somewhere. I've hidden it somewhere. Uh, come back, contact. All is forgiven. Uh, where is it? I've given it to charity. No, I haven't. It's here. It's here somewhere. Right, okay, <laughs> several minutes later of faffing. Right, okay, now, I definitely want some form of, what can I, I want something more sustained. I mean, a lot of the stuff in here is more percussive and short, so the amount of sustained stuff in there is limited. Uh, I, I, okay, peel guitar's nice. Oh, so we've got a guitar in there already. Okay, tell you what, I'm going to go back to frozen strings and see if I can find a way of making this work nicely. Um, what have we got? Birdsong, harmonics. No, it needs to be slightly more full. Okay, let's try. We haven't tried the violin one yet. Let's try that. Which one's that on? Let me put it out of a. I'm going to put it. We're going to put this out of a different output of the um, a mixer. Get it up and then put something, another effect on it. There, it's coming out of this one. Inserts. Let's have which one? That one. Trance gate on it. Ah, now we're talking. That's all right. That's going to work. That's going to work rather well. Okay. So it's a very long sustained sound, but actually, by adding this, you're getting a bit of movement. Tuning in these is, is obviously bang on, but I think, I mean, and I'm not just, you know, saying, I, I think it really adds character. You get so used to everything being clean, clinically clean and perfect, and it just lacks character. And the one thing that this library's got in, in spades is character. Okay, right, let's go for this now, shall we? I think it could do more of all this. something else you could probably do I would probably take that um, that 
oh, why don't I just do it? Don't talk about it, guys, just do it. What I thought I will, if I bounce this uh, little bit of guitar out, um, and then what we're going to do is put some reverse reverb on it. And um, so it's got a sh show you. So guitar rev. OK. So we take the guitar, we cut, and we paste it into guitar rev. And we run. Now, OK, so what you do is you run the thing backwards, and you put some. Um, uh, let's get rid of those tracks, which we don't need now. Uh, delete, remove tracks. Doing they were gone. Right, so we're going to solo this one out. We're going to put some reverb on it, then run it backwards. It's the old. Okay, so let's get the mixer up. Um, it's an old. I mean, the, way back in the days when the of, you know, tape multi-track tape machines. I used to do. I mean, God, that dates me. When I was a when I was a long-haired teenager. You would turn the tape over so it ran backwards, uh, where's the, and put the reverb in, and then run it the other way. Okay, so what we're going to do is we put it on as an insert effect. We're going to put some uh, reverb on like this, and then we're going to run the whole thing backwards. So I'll show you what happens. So it sounds like this when it's running backwards. Go away. Get rid of you. Go on, run. Now, we bounce that to audio. So you've got a backward guitar sound with reverb on. So what's going to happen when you turn it the other way around? You're going to get the reverb um, running backwards, but the guitar sound is now going to run the right way around because it was reversed, and now it's turned the right way back again. So let's see what this sounds like. That sounds nice. We can get rid of a lot of the front of it, though. We don't need that much. Um, we need to move it down a bit. Uh, how about there? Um, and that is going to need some... The actual guitar now sounds dry because all the reverb is going backwards, and so we need to get the um, mix up again. Where's my backward reverb gone? Down here. So now we will put a send effect on. We will put the lexicon reverb back on. So now this is sending to the reverb. Okay, so we can then duplicate that, so you get that more than once. The lead-in is a bit long, so I'll get rid of that and put it... Uh, it's fine. It's Okay, look, let's have a performance, shall we? I'm going to call, call this done. The two hardest things, as I said in How to Write Music, is starting and knowing when you're finished. <laughs> There you go. Okay, so that's I think I think we call that done. Um, 
What I hope you get from this is, A, the enormous potential of these sounds uh, to create a really distinctive sound, really something quite atmospheric. It's not remotely close to an orchestral sample, which for a company which is so well known for its orchestral samples is doubly amazing. Um, these are obviously sounds created by Christian, um, um, I think predominantly. So it is a little bit weirdly like spending some time inside Christian Henson's head, which is a kind of interesting place to be. <laughs> and, uh, no, but you can see his, the choices he's made all the way down the line, you know, particularly things like the frozen strings, which is clearly a sound, sort of sound um, the type which really appeals to him. Um, so what this should inspire you to do is not just to use Spitfire Labs, but to go out there. If you've got contact, full version of contact, you can make your own samples. You can start dinging and pinging and really simple stuff. Just stick it in and off you go. And you can find your own voice. Anyway, um, I hope that's inspired you. And um, please get out there. Go and buy as many of the Spitfire Labs um, products as you possibly can because every penny of it goes uh, to charity. They're fantastic sounds. I recommend it all the time to our postgraduate students as a great stepping stone to finding a distinctive sound of their own. And I recommend it wholeheartedly to you as well.